In this video, we'll master Punnett squares for the GED science test. We'll define some key genetic terms as we solve problems step by step. Let's go. Use the Punnett square and the passage to answer the following questions. Two parents are carriers of cystic fibrosis, a recessive genetic disease. The allele F represents the normal gene and F represents the cystic fibrosis allele. Neither parent has the disease, so each has genotype FF. The Punnett square shows the possible genotypes for their child. What is the probability that a child of these parents will inherit cystic fibrosis, which is genotype FF? This is an example of a probability and sampling question in GED science. If you want to ace your GED science exam, you must know how to solve questions like these. So, before we begin solving this question, let's discuss a few terminologies. First, we'll talk about the allele. An allele is a version of a gene. For instance, there's a gene that we inherit from our parents that affects whether we can roll our tongue. One version, or allele of that gene, lets you roll your tongue. We'll call that version, capital R. The other version, or allele, doesn't let you roll your tongue. We'll call that version, lowercase r. The tongue rolling gene, capital R, is a dominant allele. A dominant allele is an allele that shows its trait even if there is only one copy of it. This simply means that you must inherit at least one capital R allele in order to roll your tongue. Next, the non-tongue rolling allele, lowercase r, is a recessive allele. A recessive allele is an allele that only shows its trait if there are two copies of it. This means you must inherit two of these lowercase r alleles to be unable to roll your tongue. Therefore, if you can roll your tongue, you have at least one dominant allele, capital R. However, if you cannot roll your tongue, this means you have two recessive non-tongue rolling alleles, lowercase r. Note that dominant alleles are always represented as capital letters and recessive alleles are always represented as lowercase letters. So, from the question, notice that the cystic fibrosis disease comes from a recessive allele. And this allele is represented by a lowercase f. Since cystic fibrosis disease comes from the recessive allele, lowercase f, the child in the question will need to inherit two of them to get the disease. However, the capital F is the dominant allele, and it represents a normal gene. Now note that everyone inherits two alleles, one from their father and the other from their mother. So you can either inherit two dominant alleles, two recessive alleles, or one dominant allele and one recessive allele. The combination of the two alleles you inherit is called a genotype. For instance, in our tongue rolling example, you can have a genotype of capital RR, or a genotype of lowercase rr, or a genotype that is a mixture of capital R and lowercase r. However, remember we said earlier that if you inherit at least one dominant capital R allele, you could roll your tongue, but if you inherit two recessive lowercase r alleles, you could not. Now that we know what an allele is and what dominant and recessive alleles are, let's take a close look at the Punnett square. A Punnett square is just a simple table that is used to predict the possible gene combinations and traits that offspring could inherit from their parent. If you look closely at the Punnett square, you'll see that both the father and the mother have two types of alleles, a dominant normal allele written as a capital F and a recessive allele written as a lowercase f, which causes the disease. This means that each parent has the genotype capital F, lowercase f, since both parents have this genotype, neither parent has the disease. Now inside the Punnett square, these are the possible genotypes that the child could inherit from the parents. So the child could inherit two dominant alleles from both father and mother, or one dominant allele from the mother and a recessive allele from the father, or one recessive allele from the mother and a dominant from the father, or two recessive alleles from both the father and mother. Each genotype has a 25% chance of appearing in the child. Now, since only the genotype FF causes the cystic fibrosis disease, 
This means that there's only a 25% chance that the child would inherit the disease. So the correct answer is B. What percentage of the children from these parents are expected to be carriers of the cystic fibrosis allele, heterozygous FF, not showing the disease? Now, before we solve the question, there are a few more terms we need to know. First, a genotype can be heterozygous. Heterozygous simply means that there are two different alleles in a genotype. This means that the genotype is made up of a dominant allele and a recessive allele. Examples of heterozygous genotypes are capital F, lowercase f, and capital R, lowercase r. In both cases, the capital letter represents the dominant allele, and the lowercase letter represents the recessive allele. Now there are other related terms that might not apply directly to this question, but could appear on your GED science test. So, let's discuss those terms. Next, a genotype can be homozygous dominant. Homozygous dominant simply means that the genotype is made up of two identical dominant alleles. So both letters in the genotype must be the same capital letters. For example, capital FF and capital RR. Finally, a genotype can be homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive simply means that the genotype is made up of two identical recessive alleles. So both letters in the genotype must be the same lowercase letters. For example, lowercase ff and lowercase rr. Now let's go back to our question. The heterozygous genotype ff contains the recessive cystic fibrosis allele. However, the disease does not appear because the dominant allele capital F overrides it. This means that children with this genotype FF carry the cystic fibrosis allele but will not have the disease themselves. Looking at the Punnett square, we can see that two out of the four possible genotypes are the heterozygous FF genotypes. Remember that each genotype in the Punnett square has a 25% chance of appearing in the children. Therefore, to find the percentage of children who will inherit the heterozygous genotype, we simply add the percentages of these two genotypes. So, we have 25% plus 25%, which gives us 50%. So, the answer is B. Plants, the allele for tall stems, capital T, is dominant over the allele for short stems, lowercase t. A homozygous tall plant is crossed with a heterozygous tall plant. Draw a Punnett square to show all the possible genotypes of the offspring. Drawing a Punnett square is a recurring question in the GED science test. So, let's use this question to learn how to draw one. The first thing you need to take note of is that the allele for tall stems is capital T because it is dominant. Next, the allele for short stems is lowercase t, because it is recessive. Now, according to the question, a homozygous tall plant crossed with a heterozygous tall plant. So for the homozygous tall plant, the homozygous here means that the plant has two of the same alleles. Since this plant is a tall plant, that means that it must have two of the tall stem alleles, capital TT. Next, for the heterozygous tall plant, the heterozygous here means that the plant has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Since capital T represents dominant and lowercase t represents recessive, the heterozygous plant would have the genotype capital T lowercase t. Now, we have all the information we need to draw the Punnett square. The first thing we need to do is draw a square. Next, we'll draw a vertical line right down the middle from the top to the bottom. Then we'll draw a horizontal line from left to right. In the earlier questions, the Punnett square was shown without lines. However, for your GED science test, we recommend drawing the square with lines, as this makes it easier to stay organized and avoid mistakes. After drawing the square, the next thing you have to do is write down the parents and their corresponding alleles. 
From the question, the homozygous tall plant crossed with a heterozygous tall plant, so both plants are the parents. The homozygous tall plant has a genotype capital TT, so we'll write it on the top like this. Next, heterozygous tall plant has the genotype capital T lowercase t, so we'll write it on the left side like this. Note that, unless the science test instructions specify otherwise, it doesn't matter which side of the Punnett square you place each parent's genotype. So, we could have placed the capital TT on the left side and the capital T lowercase t on top. Now, it's time to fill the Punnett square. In every box, We'll take one allele from the top and one from the left and bring them together. So for the first box, we'll take capital T from the top and capital T from the left side. For the second box, we'll also take the capital T from the top and capital T from the left side. Next, for the third box, we'll take the capital T from the top and the lowercase t from the left side. And for the fourth box, we'll take the capital T from the top and the lowercase t from the left side. So this is the Punnett square.